of being born in Israel. I was born in Morocco, but where? Not in Casablanca, <laughs> in Marrakesh, in the Mount, Atlas Mountains. Wow. It's the Sahara Desert. My parents were very poor. They never know to read. They never know to write. The first time in my life that I saw book, it was when I was at the first class. Kita Alf. I never saw books. Think about that, how many books we play, we, we buy to our children. No, I grow without books. But every night, my father that never, that were, they were illiterate. He, every night, he told us a story. <laughs> every night, and the same story. The Lord Shama. Every night, the same story. And the story is about a place that my father never know the place, this place. Never saw picture of this place. But this, the name of this place, it come as a code from generation to generation. You know what is this? Mm -hmm. Yerushalayim, not Jerusalem. Yerushalayim. In Hebrew, this is only one word in Hebrew that my father told us a story about this Yerushalayim. And he said that in Yerushalayim, there are many trees. When you touch the trees, you get honey and milk. Mm -hmm. And under the trees, there are lions and sheep. Mm -hmm. Where is this Jerusalem? <laughs> My Jerusalem is all the stones. When I walk in, in, this, in Yerushalayim, I feel the blood of the soldiers, of the people, that died to let me to continue to walk in this Yerushalayim. And one night, my father said, this night, Mashiach coming. I asked my father, how this Mashiach look like? I, I want to, to recognize him. And he said that he will come with sandals and t-shirt. <laughs> you know who is the Mashiach? The Shaliyah of the Jewish Agency. <laughs> the Shaliyah. <laughs> yes, this is the Mashiach. Because this land is a miracle. It's a big miracle. And uh, we made Aliyah in, last, in the last year of 1964. And, yeah. ma? Yeah. No, yeah. 64 after the <laughs> 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 this is the last aliyah from, from this year the king of Morocco closed Morocco and he didn't let the Jewish people to be to come to Israel so it was 1964 and we sent to Beersheba, not Yerushalayim. But when people asked my father, where did you live? He said, Yerushalayim, because you know, only one word in Hebrew, Yerushalayim. <laughs> because Yerushalayim, it's not only the city. Yerushalayim is the dream. Yerushalayim is the longing. Yerushalayim is the code that passed from Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, until today. And uh, in Be'er Sheva, I, I want to learn something about this Eretz Israel. And I want to know how to love land that I, I'm not born here, how to teach if you ask me what is the problem today, how to teach your children to love a place 
that they didn't born here. They didn't know, they didn't feel the ground of this place. And as I was a little girl, I was 10 years old, I asked myself how to love because my father didn't tell me stories about Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov. He didn't know. Nothing. And I learned to love Eretz Israel from songs. Hmm. I began to sing songs of Eretz Israel about Kever Rachel, about Hermon Mountain, about many, many places. And in one of these songs, it's in Hebrew, you must uh, translate it. It's a, a song that wrote it by Nathan Alterman, a big poker. The name of this song is Morning. And he said, Beharim kva Hashemesh melahetet. One minute. Uba emek od nutzetzatal. Anu ohavim otach moledet. Besimcha. Beshir. Ube aman. We love you. How we love you? With happiness. With song. The amal was love, labor. labor. You can't love this country only to, you must love this country in moment of happiness and moment of darkness. It's easy to love when we, we were young. You remember the day, the wedding? <laughs> we were very young, you know, our body, our body. <laughs> and the man that we, we, uh, it was the, uh, uh, the beautiful man, yes, the long legs, there are many, many legs, you know, in the Jewish, the Jewish wedding, people didn't hear the rabbi. He said one sentence, this building will continue to be because it's very easy to love when we were young, but how we continue to love each other when we begin the problems, when we, we are not like as we were before. So how to love this country? Not when we establish, when we build. Today, today, after 76 years, this country is old. And we have here many problems. Did you continue to love this land as the first day when we come here? How to teach the children to love? And this thing, in this song, Nathan Alterman wrote one sentence. Ma odlo natanu veniten, what we can give and we didn't give it. And I ask myself, what I give to this land? I come here, Baruch Hashem, I have a home. It's not a home. I, 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 all, Seven years, seven years, I was, I live in Maabara. You know what is Maabara? Yeah. It's like a camp without gas, without fridge. I was Kita Yud Aleph, without gas and fridge. Very, very poor, but we were very happy. Today we give to our children, everyone have a room, a tablet, and you know, <laughs> you can ask yourself, and they are happy because we were very happy without all this. Why? Because we come back to our home, to our land. And I ask myself what I can give to this country because I find building, I, I, I was very happy, and I didn't know 
that one day I will give my son to this land. I remember when we uh, arrived to Haifa and my father kneeling and kissing the ground of Eretz Israel. And I was 10 years old. I asked myself, what my father, what is this behavior of my father to kiss the ground? And I didn't imagine that one day I will do the same thing when I will kiss the ground of our of Mount Herzl when I will bury my two children. I will do the same thing as my father. Um, 13, year, 13 years ago, on the eve of Passover, three angels knocked on my door. They didn't bring with them the prophet Eliyahu. <laughs> Rather, they were the barrier of terrible news. My second son, Eliran, a deputy commander of Golani Battalion 12, a father of four little children, the biggest was six years old. The little was two months old. 32, uh, 32 years old. He was killed fighting Hamas in Gaza. <laughs> like today, nothing changed. <laughs> when I saw them, I ran, I shut the door, I shut the window so no one could can Enter. When they come to my home, I grab their hand and beg them, don't say the word. Don't deliver the news. Just let me have my son for one minute more. Because as long as you don't say those horrible news, my second, my son still lives. It has to be a mistake, I said. I paid the ultimate price of our country's survivor 12 years before. My first born Uriel, an officer in a special unit of Golani, it's called Sayeret Golani, was killed by Hezbollah in Lebanon. You understand? This war, this war continued. We didn't finish the, this war. And if it's not painful enough, my dear husband Eliezer, unable to bear the loss of Uriel, five years after Uriel, he died of broken heart. <laughs> so it was the eve of Passover. And we gathered to the cellar without Uriel, without Eliraz, without Eliezer, and we cried when we read the Haggadah, Bechol Dor Vador, Omdim Alenu Lechanotenu. In every generation, they rise eyes to destroy eyes. In, in Eliraz's, it was Hamas, in Uriel, it was Hezbollah, and today is the same. My sons were sensitive, modest, and observant. They never wish for war. There is no mother in Israel that teach her, her children to die. You know, we are a nation, Mekadesh Chaim. Life is holy. We, we are dead. We never ask our children to die. We pray to Hashem. Please let them to continue to live. But the other mothers in Gaza, they teach the children to die. This is not our way. And uh, I continue. I was the principal of school here in Givat Ze'ev, 24 years. It's not religious. I, I come from a religious home. But uh, I, I was a principal 
of secular school, but it was like Schechter School of United States. <laughs> Salomon Schechter School. I love this school. I love this school. Because in Israel, I want to tell you, in secular school, they didn't know nothing from the Bible and from Tefillah, nothing. In Schechter School, they teach them the tradition, the Tefillah, I love this way of uh, Salomon Schechter School. And I was here a, a teacher, and I, people ask me how you can continue from where you get your strength. I was now, and this is the first day that I'm not there, every day I wake up from 8 o'clock until 10 o'clock night, I meet all the families that lost their children. Until now, I meet 165 families. Think about that every day, to be with them, to strengthen them, to tell them that their life continue. You can't stop them. You see the sun? It's continue to shine. Only the life of these children are rest. But the life continues. And we must get up from this grief, from this sorrow, and continue. But they ask me how, how? I want to die. I want you to know that every mother, every father, when they bury their children, they want to be on the grave. Instead then, they want to be there. It's not normal that mothers and fathers bury their children. It's not normal. And people ask me, how you continue? And I tell them, you know, our enemies, they kill the body of my children. But no one can kill the spirit of my children. And I am here to continue this spirit. Because, you know, in this war, they surprise us. They come with guns, with, with tractors, with, a, with cars. They kill children, grandchildren. But we surprise them with our spirit, the spirit of unified. Uni unity. unity. We surprised them. And what our enemies want to do, they didn't want only to kill our children. They want to kill our ability to continue to live. They want to destroy our soul. And I will not give them this victory. I will not give them this. I continue the spirit of my children, spirit of loving Torah, of loving each other, of loving this land. So because of that, I meet every week a soldier. I teach, I do all this voluntarily for Am Israel. I teach in the special school. It's called Bahad, it's called Bahad Echad. It's a school when they prepare them to be officers. So I teach their leadership. I teach all these soldiers. And think about that, that I come now to families that I meet their children. And they, and they wrote some sentences for my lecture. And the family showed me the sentences. So, I continue, why? Because my faith in God, in Hashem. Only Hashem can give me comfort. No one can give me comfort. Only Hashem. But it is not easy to continue to serve this Hashem. Why? Because 
I say, Hashem, every Shabbat I light candles. I pray, Zakeni legadel banim bnei banim. Let me to to uh, to see my children. But you take my children. Where are you, Hashem? Where are you? You know, when they come to tell me about my second son, Eliraz, I ask these uh, people to come with me to give this message to one. And they say, we give the message to all your children, everyone from your family know about your son. I take them outside, took them outside. I look at the sky and I say, give this message to Hashem. I want to know how Hashem accept this news. Why? Because Hashem is the father of the widow. I was widow. Because Hashem is the father of the orphans. My children were orphans. I want to know how Hashem accept this terrible news. And you know, in United States, you say, not in your area. I was now in Los Angeles, <coughs> Nevada, um, all these places. They say, nada. You know what is nada? <laughs> Nothing happened. The sun continued to shine, and the world continued as normal. In that moment, I remember <coughs> one man. It is Aharon, Moses' brother. He lost two children in the same day. And the behavior <coughs> of this guy was Vaidom Aharon. He was in silent. I will never get answer to the question how Hashem lead the world. No one can give me why my child uh, yesterday I was in one family. Six children, six soldiers was in a tank. Only one of them was killed. The mother asked me, why my son? <coughs> she didn't want the other to, to die. But she asked, why my son? Why? What the four children of my son Eliraz what they did, what they did wrong. The little child, Gilly, was two months old. What they do wrong? Why a shame? <coughs> no one can give me answer to the question, thank you. Answer to the question of how a shame lead this world. And now, I want to continue to love Hashem. <laughs> How to love him? You know, we have a sentence in Hebrew. If do it Hashem besimcha, serve Hashem with happiness. What is the meaning of happiness? Happiness, it, it is how much money you have. Happiness is if you appreciate what you have now in this moment. Why? Because the life are temporary. temporary. We didn't know if we will continue to live. And if you have now children, hug them, kiss them, be with them, live a big life, with happiness and thanks Hashem for what you have now because you don't know what will be tomorrow. You know, after I lost my first child, I said to myself, oh, I think I finished with Hashem. He will not come to me. And you see, he come to me with my husband, with my second son, and now one month ago with one of my Little grandchildren, mm -hmm. he is only 10 years old. She, she have a good, healthy 
but Hayala Dom Lev, how you say Dom Lev? Dom Lev, but it's not her. And now she's got a pulse. So Hashem continued to try me. It's not finished. If you think that if we lost now someone, nothing will happen to us, no. So be happy today. If you have children that call you mom and pop, thank Hashem for that. Because there are mothers that wish to hear Ima. Mm -hmm. So I teach myself to thank God for what I have now. I can stand now. I can open my eyes. I can drink. Last week I was in the hospital. One of the soldiers, they cut two hands of this soldier. And there is a fly, a zvoom, how you say? The fly on his nose. And he tried to, to move this fly. And he do like this with his, mm. you know. And I saw him, and he said to me, Miriam, I am very jealous. If I have only one finger, one finger, I can move this. Think about that, we have hands. We can hug today. Yeah, we say in Hebrew, yalla, to be happy today. To thanks for what we have today. And life, life is not how many years you live. I know many people that live 90 years old. But what they do every morning, they wake up, they take the car to Ikea, they buy sofa, they change sofa. <laughs> life is not how many years you live. Life is what the meaning that you give to every moment of your life. Did you do something for someone? Did you hug someone? Did you, did you do chesed? You know what is chesed to give, to help someone? Did you hear, I, I have every morning maybe 25 message, please can you come? My daughter want to die. He only want to speak with you. Can you come? You know, and you must change your life for doing something good for these people. And knowing that you can be down, down, but yet you can grow for the, for moment of crisis. You can grow. The moment of crisis, it's a, like a building that someone destroyed it, but you can take this stone and build a new building in your life. How to wake up? I learned that from one of our kings. It is King David. King David has a boy. This boy was ill. When this boy was ill, King David was on the floor. He didn't eat. He only prayed. When the servant came and told King David, your son died, you know what is the first word in the Bible? Vayakum, he get up. To get up. From the place, where are you? From this ground, from this grief, from this sorrow. And to get up, and the servant say, how it can be? When you, when your son was ill, you didn't eat, you only prayed. When we told you that your son died, you, went, you get up, you eat, you change your dress. And he said, the child is gone. Can I, can I bring him to me? No. 
There is no way to bring my children to me. I will meet them. I choose the way how to meet them. You choose every day which kind of woman you want to be. We choose our way. It's not Hashem. He gave us. He gave us the choice to choose. And I choose to continue the way of my children, to be proud of the way of my children, to be happy. And Hashem blessed me. And you know, the, the first question that I ask families that lost their children, how many children you have? And they confused because you at a sofer you and you count. count this child that died. Yes, they continue in another way, in the way of spirit. They are not here. We can smell them. We can hear the voice of these children. We can hug them. And we must teach ourselves how to be with them, not with the body, with the soul of them. It's not easy. So, life of me. And what is for me bravery? Bravery, it's not only to die for our land. No. Bravery is to live after you bury your children, <laughs> to continue the life. This is bravery. And I want to tell you a little story about that. My son Eliras died uh, two, three days before Passover. And we said only today, Shiva, today. My daughter-in-law was with us, Shlomit, and she asked me, Miriam, can you come with me to our home in Eli? You know how mothers love so much to be in the homes of their children. But it was very, very difficult for me. How to be in the home of my son and knowing that he will never be there. It is very difficult. So I didn't give answer, but I heard a little voice, a voice of my grandchildren, one of the children of Eliraz. He was six years old, and he said, oh, if Safta will come in, she will cook for us meatballs. <laughs> it's Moroccan meatballs, Moroccan. <laughs> and you know, every family has a special food. And our children, when they will be in Japan, in, a, in every place, they only think about the cake of a mother, the, the soup of my grandmother, you know. And in our family, they love so much the meatballs. <laughs> but to cook meatballs, you know, after you bury your child, you didn't want to eat nothing that they love. How you can eat the cake that your son loves so much? How you can cook something? You can. So it was very difficult. It was Thursday. I asked one of my neighbor to buy for me meat. I didn't see this meat. They put this meat on the fridge. Another a neighbor, I asked them to put spice on this meat. And Friday morning, I wake up and I understand, I understood that I didn't cook for my grandchildren meatballs and the taxi went for me eight o'clock. I went outside, I look at, this, at the heaven, and I scream, Hashem, wh why you punished me? You take for me my son, but why you take for me my ability to cook meat 
born. <laughs> and why I sleep with him? I think that Hashem is very, very busy with me. <laughs> why? Because when I have a problem, I call to my children. No one, all the phones are busy. No one can answer me. So only one wait for my phone. This is Hashem. So I call him every time. And I, I say, why? Why you take for me my ability to cook a meat food? I come back to my home. I put this meat on the table. And I, I remember that I was one hour around this meat. I can't touch this meat. But I imagine my son Eliral sit before me and I began to prepare the first meatball and I spoke with him. Did you remember my beloved son the first time that I gave you the first meatball? It was when you were one year old. You didn't eat the meatball, you ate the sauce. <laughs> when you were two years old, I gave you a meatball, you put this meatball on your hair, <laughs> on your face. When you were 32 years old, you come back from Lebanon with your soldier. I gave you 20 meatballs and you eat them after two minutes. <laughs> now, excuse me, my beloved son. Mom will continue to prepare meatballs and you will never eat them again. I can tell you how much tears are in, in these meatballs. <laughs> And I come to the house of my son Elias. And you learn in the United States that there is a big step. This is the step of Neil Armstrong on the moon. You remember? It's not the big step. The big step is mother that come to the house of his child, and knowing that he will never be there to see the bed of my son, and knowing that he will never sleep there, to see the library, he will never continue to read books. So when I come to Eli, my grandchildren come to me. You think they say, Safa, we are very happy to see you? No. <laughs> Do they say only the question of bravery? Did you cook for us, meatballs? <laughs> to wake up, to dress, to change, to put, you know, to, to cut your hair, to do things. The, the simple things, this is bravery. And I want to tell, uh, uh, tell you that today, maybe, you begin the day with bravery. Why? Because our life are a life of challenge, a very, and the first ch challenge today is not the traffic, not the traffic, the challenge today is when you put your phone in the hour that you want to wake up and the phone call you to wake up and you take the blanket, the blanket. <laughs> every one of us, we put the blanket and we say, no, 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 two minutes more. <laughs> you know, this is the first challenge every day. Did you wake up? You put this blanket from you because sometimes you want it to continue. I can choose to continue to cry about my destiny, to blame many, many people, to blame Hashem. But this is not the way that I choose. I choose to thank Hashem for what I have. And Baruch Hashem, 
I have six children. Oh, wow. Two of them, you know, they died in this world. But from all the others, I have 90, 19 wow. grandchildren. Hey. You know what is this happiness? But when I saw the children of Elias, when Gilly, that was two months old, she was two years old, she stand near the photos of Elias and she asked me, Safta, who is this man? Mm -hmm. And I said, this is your father. She didn't know the word, the word, father. Think about that, that now in Israel, there are many children that will never know this father. Some of them are pregnant. Some of them are pregnant. Some of them are so young, they will not know him. But we must tell them, who is this father? And we continue the story of our nation. Why? Because they can kill my children, they can kill all these children, but no one can broken the spirit of our nation. And the Am Israel high. And I wish, uh, first I want to tell you something. Thank you very much for your support. I, I was in the United States uh, two weeks ago. We drive from Cleveland, Cleveland, Utah, Arizona, Nevada, <laughs> California. All these places. And we met there all the, the communities, the Jewish communities around all these places. And I saw how you support Am Israel. Even you are not here, your heart is here. <laughs> we feel as brother and sister. And I want you to know that my children, they didn't fought only for us. They fought also for you. For you to continue to live peacefully in every place around the world. We are together in a moment of happiness, and we are together in a moment of sadness. And we wish that this war will finish and the peace will come and we can raise our children in environment of peace and loving, but not death. And the second thing that I want to tell you, <laughs> you can grow from crisis. You can grow, you can build a big building. I didn't know that all the people in Israel will know me. I wish to be annoying, to continue my life as I was before. But you see this death in Hutsini. From me, some comfort that I didn't know before. It's like this week, we will, we will read from the Bible about Joseph. Joseph was in the bore. How do you say bore? <laughs> and from this place, it, it, it grew. We can continue. We have abilities. We can choose to continue the life. We can be also not only to choose the life. Why I begin this morning to tell you to dance, to be happy. Because night, life with not happiness are not life. To be happy, it's not only to, uh, to <coughs> It's to to um, leharich to appreciate what you have today. So thank you very much. Thank you to Rabbanit.